Hello and welcome. I am Is Friday, uh, and today we are moving forward with the Northern Guardians, uh, Thrones and Bones Northern Guard campaign setting, based on the fantasy trilogy Thrones and Bones by Lou Anders. We are playing on Ver Foundry Virtual Tabletop, and we have masterfully crafted maps by Heroic Maps. Some of our additional tokens are provided by Forgotten Adventures. So check out our YouTube in the links below for the VODs if you're watching us live. And our fantastic video editor, Art Plebe, is chopping up our, our content for short videos. If you'd like to support us, then you can check out our Kofi below. And now I turn to Mackenzie to go through the recap that you had exactly three minutes to prepare for. I am excited. So, last time on Thrones and Bones, our adventurers met each other in the Mead Hall, and everyone there was gobsmacked by Bjorn's height. And after some very tense introductions from Tulami and Toki in particular, a nearby table thought it would be a great idea to throw a turkey leg at the biggest guy in the room. So a food fight ensued. We had a brief exchange of potatoes and cheese, but our adventurers came out on top. The one guy, shockingly, did not accept this outcome, and even less shockingly, lost to Bjorn in one-on-one -on -one combat. Really fast. Upon returning to the meat hall, Bjorn found his very mad old friend who dragged the entire group along to look for a cat. Following a series of small misadventures, we were hot on the trail of the cat and right inside of a den of wolves. The last time we left them, they were composing themselves following their very grueling wolf battle. Okay. Excellent. That was better than I thought it would be with three minutes of prep. Okay. You're getting good at this. Okay. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Let me push these buttons here. Oh, button, why are you not? Just to spite you. Oh, apparently. Um, hmm. So you all are in the the mounds, as it were. And you can see the uh, dim light over the walls uh, to Bensa behind you. And you see an illuminescent greenish light emanating from a lot of the graves that you see in the distance through the hills. There's a light fog that drifts around the path that you've taken. You've just slain those wolves. What are you all doing? None of those were cat. So we still have to find it. Yeah. Um, I, again, I just want to put this out there. I don't really uh, have a great feeling about this. And uh, I don't know if we should be walking around the dead and disturbing their slumber. These are dead people. I forgot that's what the mounds are. But uh, I, I was I, going I, to say very astute observation, like. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't think we can just let the, the cat run free, so I, I guess we just push forward, yeah? I would oh. like to look at the shiny green lights very closely, <laughs> please. Are you talking to me, or are you talking to the uh, other people? I'm talking to the powers that be. Okay. <laughs> I, would like to, I would like to look at the green lights. Okay. Uh, please use your normal voice when you're talking to the DM, <laughs> so I can tell. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. Yeah. I had to reload Foundry. Okay. So uh, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check there. 21. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so you can see that uh, in the distance, perhaps about 100 feet away, as the path winds to your northeast, you can see a an odd greenish light emanating, kind of shooting out of a passage that leads into the Barrow's book. Um, this may seem crazy to all of you, but I really think we should go that way. And she points to the door with the green light. I think 
it looks very promising. If you're looking for an evil cat, I think you'd find it in there. It looks very evil. That's probably true. Um, do, you, do you think the cat killed all these people? Like in the mounds? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 they've been here for a while. The, the people in town that have been dying, I, I think it at least has something to do with it. Oh yeah, well, the people in town, sure. Uh, well, I um, suppose... Sorry, go ahead. I, I suppose we won't get much answers just standing around here. Toki is uh, leaning on his staff heavily. And at this point, the shillelagh spell had probably dispersed and his staff kind of molds back into whatever it was. You kind of see Toki like this, and then as the staff transforms back to its normal, you know, vistage, he drops it suddenly. He's like, ah! Did you, did you guys see that? Um, That's not normal occurrence for you. This doesn't happen all the time. You're not used to that. No. He leans down and picks his staff up and looks at it, and then is this is this the magic of the pharaohs? No, Toki, this is your magic. I know magic. Every now and then. Of course, we talk man. Drops his staff again. <laughs> Here, oh. let me get that for you. She'll <laughs> pick the staff back up and. Just kind of grab his hand, put it in his hand, give him a pat. <sighs> well, all of this is happening, Tulami has been slowly walking towards the green light. Taking their time. I don't know how long that takes me, but... Uh, are you... Just... Go ahead. No, sorry. Are you, are you, like, making a point to, like, hide that you're walking towards it, or...? I mean, I'm just, just like, moving? you guys are arguing about something. I'm gonna go over here because Lena said that there's something over here. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want to rush anyone, but Tulami seems to be going, and uh, I don't think that it's a very wise idea to let him go by himself. Oh! So, uh, yeah. Run after him. Yep. Uh, yeah. He killed those wolves. I'm sure he'll be fine. It was really cool. I didn't know you could throw knives like that. That was very good. Well, yeah, it was pretty impressive. I'll make sure and tell him that when we get back to the meat hall, and I'll buy him some. That will be cool, too. Oh. And Toki, that right. is a very fair point. The kid can take care of himself, but we are still the adults in this situation. We are still the responsible party. All right, well, let's get moving. And Bjorn's going to head towards Tilami. Okay. And and Tulami, did you pick up your knives? Yeah, I did that after combat. Okay, cool. And you are heading towards what? Uh, the green light Lena was talking about. Okay, so as you uh, pass through the uh, the barrows, you could feel the, the chill starting to affect you now that you've been away from the warmth of the city and the torches. Is anybody lit a torch or are we going dark here? I feel like we lit I would a torch prefer last to go time. dark. Well, I mean, we didn't. Is the, maybe we should. Is the green light not bright enough to illuminate? Oh, it the is. Green. I'm just asking if you're lighting a torch. Okay. Uh, then fuck it. Yeah, Lena will light a torch. I don't think I have torch. All right. I have one torch. So you all catch up with uh, Tulami as you start to approach uh, the the uh, entrance to the what well, appears like a crypt with stone uh, door, stone door frame and a descending stairwell leading into mm. oh sorry green illuminated hallway go ahead can I roll investigation to see if there's any signs that this has been broken into because obviously they'll be sealed when when the bodies are interred I was trying to see if you know there's evidence of recent sort of damage to the way in. Go ahead. Roll no. investigation, yeah. Sure. Hold on. Investigation. Oh, dear. I'm not... <laughs> what happened? What'd you roll? I rolled a nine. Sorry. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, as you look in, you can see that uh, one of the stone uh, doorways has been pushed off of its uh, hinge and is laying flat against the wall to one side. And this looks like something that is sometimes traveled um, or has been within the last year or so, but it's really hard to say how often. It's not a through fare that is used often, but it's definitely traveled. You can see that the dust and some of the rocks on the stairwell are pushed out of the way, like it, you know, as footsteps tend to do, right? Um, Jake? Yeah. Would I know whether or not it was commonplace in Bents for people to actually go inside of the barrows? Make a history check. Let's get the right page up. Do, 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 do. 15. Okay, so you would know that for the most part, people tend to stay away from the barrows uh, because of the... Uh, stories of Droger, uh that are associated with the Barrows often. And there's generally a lot of rumors about um, Draugr activity uh, in the Barrows in each city. So if you, for instance, have a have something untoward happen to you or uh, you know you have something unlucky happen, it's usually at the you rest the blame at the feet of the the draugr and the barrows. Um, Sten. At is usually people don't come in here. This is weird. Um, these are very scary places. They're full of undead, and you're, I don't even know if we're supposed to be here right now. But uh, you have this torch, so I guess here you, we go. You were the, you were the one who suggested it, though. Uh, well, I'm not the smartest. Give me the torch. Tool in the drawer. <laughs> Neth gave us the the secret of fire, and Neth is the goddess of the underworld, and we're gonna make sure this is properly tend to. So I'll take the I'll take the lead. Pass me the torch, and then I'll cast thermaturgy on the torch to increase its light output for as we sort of move in. Be careful with that. Yeah. It's very you uncomfortable. He seems to know what he's doing. Um, cool. I don't want to be in the front anyways. <laughs> uh, Toki will sneak up behind Sten very obviously and put his hand on his back and then have his, his staff behind him. He's like, it's okay. I know magic. I will help you. Uh, thanks, Toki. Uh, I know what your help's like and you know what? I'm feeling very safe right now. As you should. All right. All right. Well, if we're going in, uh, Tulami, stay very close. I don't want you getting hurt again. You're fine. You're not my dad. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. I just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, I, I was just trying to help, but oh, okay. Uh, Tulami, Bjorn's everybody's big brother. This is how it works. Not dad. Big, strong big brother. Thank you, Adelina. Okay. And then she'll grab his forearm again with a pat pat. Everything's going to be okay. Not too much undead here. So I'll press on. Um, Sten will move forward and have his torch, which has been in bigand through the use of thermaturgy. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to be sort of using it to guide the way, checking the ground to see if there's any obvious signs of cat paws or the like. Did you say that uh, you were going to use thermaturgy? Yep, I can. Uh, Flames to brighten for one minute, so okay. I'm gonna use it for just to make it a little bit better. All right. So as you proceed down into the tunnel, past the corpse door, which you would know is the uh, entrance door to the barrows. Yeah. Uh, You're so smart. The <laughs> the stale air uh, sort of grows uh, less fresh as you proceed down, and you notice that the greenish light as you proceed is sourceless. It's just sort of emanates around the chamber and there's no torch that emanates green light. There's no shining object, not reflected moonlight through an emerald or anything like that. It's not like the glowing mushrooms inside of Falmer Caves? It is indeed not like that. 
Would, uh... I... Go ahead. I was going to say, can I roll religion to know if there's some sort of uh, aura that sort of the restless dead give off or anything like that? Sure. May I also check that? Yeah, go ahead. May I cower a tiny bit? You may. I rolled a three. Yeah. Not this is Bjorn's aura. I was going to say, would Toki have any kind of uh, moment of clarity where he can recall some sort of magical essence or something that would cause something like this? Not yet. So as you enter the center of the vaulted chamber, the corpse of a warrior, centuries dead, lies on a stone slab along with a scattering of grave goods. In the northeastern portion of the room, there's a section of the stone wall that has collapsed inward, and beyond which, there's a dark passage, not illuminated by the green light. The dry wind that suddenly gusts through the aperture, and in its wake, a supernatural green illumination winks out, plunging the barrow into darkness. Only your torch now lights the way. Seagild says a quiet prayer to... Uh, the five and peers a little further in does the corpse look like it has moved at all recently no cool okay. actually this shaky hand comes up with a bone flute and plays a scared breathy like oh, it could be okay actually <laughs> Yes. Give a small experience. pat. Frightens Toki and he grabs onto Sten's back of his thing a little bit more. He's like, oh. oh. Sten ignores the dead Reaver and his plundered goods and heads towards the uh, gap in the, in the hole. He says, it looks like this place has been defiled. That is a bad word. We don't see that. Very it. bad. But, uh, it does seem to be true. Uh, that's not good. Is there anything beyond the, the hole? Uh, yes. The tunnel leads further into the darkness, here north. We have Bjorn and the magic man. We cannot be harmed. We will be fine. That's right, right magic. Right. I... I know magic. You know magic, yes. Good, good job. And I am very strong, so... You're so we have strong. That, we have that going for us. <laughs> You're so strong. Oh, It'll be fine. Uh, Toki looks back at Sigild and he's like, "Can Come here, just... Uh, stand in front next to Sten. I don't want to be behind him. He's he's uh, not as big as you are. Hi, hi. Sure thing. Jill shuffle up and stand in front and give Toki a little pat. A <clears throat> little pat. Yeah. She'll follow behind Sten. Okay. All right, Oops. so the tunnel, as you move forward, it's burrowed earth without any stone lining like you had encountered prior to this. Is it tall? Like, about, like, It's not. So as you proceed forward, um, the ceiling slopes downward uh, to only leave you about five feet to proceed. So you kind of, you especially Bjorn, you have to bend over in half. Well, and it's not very comfortable. The uh, sand and some dirt and rocks spill off the ceiling as your head brushes against it. Is there any sign of um, tools or? or digging something like that that would indicate uh, yeah, like maybe when this tunnel was made or if it's like a newer tunnel or something you don't see any any t any tools or anything like that as you look around it's just a narrow tunnel that has been dug into the side of that uh, that place of rest I don't think there's supposed to be tunnels in here that are this small. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I don't think this is good. Uh, we should go there. It's the shortest member of the party. I'm finally enjoying an advantage. 
um, and uh, Sten's not waiting. He's uh, he's he's pushing on, in sort of trying to keep the the torch empowered by his, his I magic. Follow Sten. I'm going to follow the light. So. I'm so glad that the shortest member of our party, our cleric, is leading the way. <laughs> yeah, Toki will be behind uh, Sigild, who is behind Sten. Yeah. I need all of you to make perception checks. Okay. Fucked up. 17 passes. Alright, let's roll. 14. Question. 13. Um, yeah. Can we just say that I'm, gonna, I'm far enough away from the torch where I don't have to roll at disadvantage? Can we say that? Yeah, if you would like i because like i would have i would have trailed behind sure till i got you'll be in the back then that's fine roll the 10. okay all right so you all proceed uh through this tunnel and as you reach the far end you feel the chill of outside return and Something a little more unnatural about the chill. It's there's a moonlight spilling in from the cave in and the roof overhead illuminating the bend in the tunnel. And the space opens up, you see glinting through the light. And there's snow flurries, impossibly in the middle of the summer, and they whirl around in a little cyclone before you, gathering up into a shape and then vanishing back into a swirling mist. That was so pretty. We should find more of those. I loved that. Really? Because Where I are you, my really... little snow print? I was getting really weird vibes from that. Uh, no, it'll be fine. Little snow friend. No big deal. Hello? No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh... I did not need to offend. Do I get any vibes from this, um, or any sort of memories that seep through? Can I vibe check this? <laughs> <laughs> we got a plus seven to vibe. Um, I, got, I get a plus seven perception. Uh, yeah, uh, you can make a history check, I suppose. All right, let's do that. You shouldn't have said plus seven perception. He immediately went for the next best. <laughs> That's fine. I'm still proficient in history. Mm -hmm. Ooh. It did not help. <laughs> What's your roll? That, that's a fat five. Okay. It is really, nice. it is really weird that uh, there's snow falling in this one crevasse, and that there is snow falling at all outside in the middle of midsummer. So as we move in, because Sten's not going, he's going to be sort of shook a little bit by the, the forming figure. Mm -hmm. We'll put it off to just a trick of the imagination. And he's going to cast uh, resistance on himself as a cantrip to give mm -hmm. him to steel himself against the cold. Um, and he's going to move on with all the courage that he's, he's known for. So he's going to start moving through the snow towards what looks like a, an entrance to the west here. Okay. All right. Think it will follow. And the... You see as you move forward, Sten, the flurry picks up again and moves a little bit closer to you. Toki's going to take a, a whack at it with his... Uh, <laughs> Get out of here! Roll the hit. All right, one second. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Uh, 23. <laughs> Okay. You feel your staff connect with something uh, more solid and forming out of the mist is a serpentine uh, frost something that curls around and reaches at you as soon as you strike it. And I need all of you ah! now to roll initiative. I love these guys. Uh, that was six damage, by the way. Uh, 20. 18. Wow, everyone yeah, rolled did. really impressively. Yeah, look wow. at that. 17. Okay. 
All right. We're going to beat the shit out of this frost spirit. <laughs> it has no chance. <laughs> this poor thing. Okay. All right. Stan's currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, Stan won't hesitate. Puts forward the uh, the torch and it, it produces a... He says a small prayer as he holds the um, sort of silvered uh, horn at his chest, which is his holy symbol. And mm -hmm. then radiant power spirals down the torch and blasts at the uh, the, the creature uh, with a sacred flame. Oh, okay. Oop, do I have to roll for the cast? Yeah. Would you, uh, yeah, it definitely hit, sorry. Three damage. Three damage, okay. All right, so you see as the, uh, the flurry of, uh, snowflakes, uh, starts to melt and the area around it, um, clears and you can see the stones beneath it now as it starts to melt a little, whirling in the air. Would you like to do anything else? I can't hear you, Stan. I muted myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw my axe and move into melee range. Okay. And then uh, hold. All right. Uh, Ectolina, it's currently your turn. What are you doing? Um, Ectolina's going to take out her hand crossbow, very freaked out like, at this ice snake and try to hit it. That's a 11 to hit. You do not hit. So you're trying so hard to get around your party members that you end up just shooting the ceiling and the crossbow bolt falls ineffectually uh, in the distance. It tried. Would you like to, would you like to do anything else? Um, uh, yes. Very discouraged that that didn't hit, but I am going to play a happy little tune and cast Bardic Inspiration on... The beautiful sick healed. Gee, thanks. You're so welcome. I love you. Sea healed. It's currently your turn. What would you like to do? Sea healed even able to get to this thing? It seems kind of crowded. Okay. Muscle your way past the uh, yarn. Mm -hmm. I totally did not actually hear what you said. I'm so sorry. Thing. You could just muscle your way past Bjorn. Ah, so I can. I will just do so. I will shuffle right on over. Sorry, sorry. You're good, you're good. And give this give this little guy a bonk with my sword. Okay. Roll the hit. I will. Oh, I'm doing so good. I think I think Seagild also caught my cold. Uh, because this is the like third six that I've rolled. Oh, so I'm gonna say that doesn't hit. Uh, and, okay, uh... yeah. So you swing and you see the uh, ice form around your sword, and then as you pull it back, uh, you notice that your blade is covered in ice now. Ah. Toki, okay, currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, uh, Toki has not had a chance to draw his shield, and uh, not really expecting this thing to actually. Uh, fight back as he swapped at it. He's just going to raise his staff up again and, and try and bonk it. Um, but as he does, he will unknowingly turn his staff again into a shillelagh. Uh, and I'm going to say an 8 doesn't hit. Does not. So as you swing, the uh, ice moves around your uh, staff, twirls in the air, and hisses at you. Ah! Would you like to do anything else? Uh, no, that that'll be it. Bjorn, currently your turn. What are you doing? Would Bjorn know anything about frost spirits? No. All right, I'm gonna swing at it. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a ninety. Okay. So as you swing, uh, you feel your sword go straight through. 
the frost spirit. And as your blade returns, you notice that it is covered in ice. And there seems to be nothing effective that is done to this creature. We're doing oh. so fucking good, you guys. Well, I tried. Uh, that's that's all I got. Oh. oh. The frost spirit. You see the mouth forming at the front of it that whips around and it zooms around all of you trying to strike each of you in the face as it whips around so I'm going to roll individual attacks on all of you that are surrounding it or a 19 to hit Toki yep 24 to hit Den ooh a natural one for uh Or, uh, what's his face? Um, Bjorn. Bjorn. Yeah. That's the best <laughs> one in that one on. Yeah. yeah. And for yeah, Seekill, the 21 to hit. So I need to roll damage for all of those people. Okay. So, Toki, you're going to take four piercing damage and three cold damage. Nice. Then you are taking four piercing damage and three cold damage. Seagild, you are taking four piercing damage and four cold damage. As the frost spirit whips between you and slaps all of you in the face before uh, returning to the corner over here and away from the torch. Salami. Stand. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm staggered. You can visibly see that the um, ice is sort of befrosting Sten's face as he's dropped to one HP by the onslaught. Tulami, currently your turn. What are you doing? I'm going to take my crossbow and try to shoot him. I'm not going to move. Okay. Is that going to be a problem with the people? It'll be harder to hit it. Uh, 12. Okay. So you see your crossbow bolt pierce through the swirling snow and stick into the barrel wall. And the frost spirit seems to be unaffected by your piercing weapon. Would How you like am to I supposed to hit him if, if it's not solid? Throw a knife extra hard. I swear it will do it. And... I might move. Yeah. That's my turn. Okay. Sten, currently your turn. What are you doing? Uh, bleeding. <laughs> Maybe not bleeding. You can see perhaps the first hints of uh, Frostburn on his, on his face uh, as he sort of drags some of the ice away and looks towards the exits of the west and starts to head that way and it's like Ugh. and as he step before he steps away actually um i'm going to cast guiding bolt he's gonna draw together and bring he's gonna staggering ring together and bring up his war horn and loose a like a, a rallying blast which forms into sort of a ghostly shape of a rampaging bull and not bull uh horse like a ball which rams into it so let's okay. see roll the head that makes me did. very happy uh, here we go. Casting. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's divine yeah. telegraph. I apologize. Um, sorry, I clicked the wrong spell. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. What'd you roll? I rolled a 19 with 17 radiant damage. Okay. Describe how your spell shatters this frost spirit. So as as he's, he's staggered, he's like his back is he's staggered back against the walls of the uh, the barrow, and like I said, he, he manages to summon up a breath, like it's shivering because his body is turning blue, and he goes, blasts the the boar, which sort of grains more and more form, blazing with radiant energy, which just shatters it, like it strikes through it. There's a scorch on the back of the barrow after it, and there's like shards of ice just 
shatter in every direction, melting as they spray Toki and Sighild with, with flecks of warm water. Yeah. We have exited combat. Ah. That was the single most attractive thing I've ever seen in my life. That was so cool. I loved it. I agree. That was amazing. Oh. I'm brief. I'll take that. Do, do you need do you need a hand? Oh, he's, like his, he's dropped his axe. He's like shivering up against the wall. Oh, uh... You don't look so uh. good. Toki says as he uh, Big Hill, is there anything you can do? Bjorn's gonna go over to Stan and just kind of wrap him in a big hug. <laughs> Perhaps well, my body heat will help. Perhaps Don't these massive tits of mine can warm him. <laughs> oh nice, Bjorn. <laughs> hit him very forward. Um Sigil just kind of goes, Oh, well, I learned a little bit back at the temple, but uh She's gonna go over and see if she can. <laughs> I don't think she has any uh, healer skits or anything. Uh, she hasn't taken her level in paladin yet. As uh, Bjorn cradles Sten and he looks over at uh, at him, he, he's gonna walk over and, and look him in the eye and just kind of mutter, mm, "You don't look so good." But as he does that, uh, the faint like glow of. of I don't know, a mystical green mist exits his mouth and uh, he's going to cast Healing Word on Sten. Uh, you get four healing back. Every my, counts. my sister taught me that spell, but when she did it, it was not nearly so creepy. He looks, <laughs> he looks back at, uh, or he looks over to um, Echolina and he's quirks his breath. What spell? What are you talking about? You are the most confusing magic man I've ever met in my life. What do you mean? He scratches his beard and he's like, you Did I do magic again? Yeah, you threw up green smoke. It was crazy. Oh. You, you healed him. Don't, it was don't, really don't worry good. about it, It's Thank really you cool. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Sten's being cradled by Bjorn, like the, the mist for cascades on his face, and you can see it go up into his nostrils as he shakily tries to take frostbitten breaths, and colour starts to return to his face, and um, the shivering stops, and his eyes sort of gain a bit of focus. He's like, oh, uh, that's... What, what happened? Looks like my hug worked. Yeah, it must have been uh, his hug. I, I don't very... do magic like that. He, he kind of wanders off and looks around the event where the uh, creature had died to see if there's anything he can take from a corpse if there is anything. <laughs> um, Sikil? Hi. Is he always like that? He's so old and forgetful and confusing? From what I can tell, yeah. That's uh, kind of why I'm following him around, to keep, keep an eye on him, you know? He's a poor sweet old man. You, you're so good for doing that. I'd punch him in the face. <laughs> oh, it's... Did somebody ask you to do that? Or did you just decide one day? Well, I, I was asked, but... I would still do it because, you know, look, just, just, just look at him. That's very honorable. What it was that sad. thing? What was what? What was that thing? That ice thing? That ice snake? Hmm. I don't know. That's them really good. Now that we have fought it, can Seahild try and recall if she knows something about this? Has heard something about this? Yeah, go ahead. Ice spirit? Sure. Arcana? Arcana? Can I... Would I know anything about them living in the caves? No. Okay, I got a ten. So you know that that was a uh, an elemental of gold. Seagild sneezes <laughs> because she is also sick. Because I say so, uh, and she says, "You know, I think that was a cold elemental." Huh? It seems kind of obvious now. Elemental. Are they dangerous? 
Yes. If if we mess with them, yes. <coughs> well, it doesn't feel too cold. I felt pretty good. There's nothing left over by the elemental. Uh, yeah. No. No, you go over and uh, you can see the remnants of the radiant energy from the guiding bolt have scarred the side of the barrow. Uh, and there's nothing left except for some snowflakes on the ground, but nothing uh, alive Tokyo. anymore. Tokyo will scoop it, up nothing the against Sten. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, Tokyo will scoop up the snowflakes and put it in one of his uh, pockets. This is magic. <laughs> Toki, dear, that's going to... Okay. I was only asking, because nothing against Sten, but who knows? Maybe he was just, like, weak. <laughs> Do not mean that's not very nice uh, at all. Bjorn, Bjorn will give kind of that older sibling-like elbow, like, be nice. <laughs> <laughs> But it kind of just kind of like tongues Talami on the head because Bjorn's just so tall. He does not know his own strength. <laughs> Two points in the Talami goes and cries for <laughs> a short uh, rest. <laughs> well, no normally I'd suggest resting, but I don't know if that's a wise thing to do here in the Barrow Mounds. We should get out of here. Uh, Sten's managed to pick himself up and he says, uh, you know, offers a prayer to Latrissa and says, let's keep going, we need to find out what's happening before we... Yes, let's go All forward. Right. We are still looking for the cat. Oh, yeah, cat. I believe so, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cat. There is a torch okay. from the snow. It obviously dropped it when he was shivering, so he picks it back up and then it changes it back like into life. That the ice spirit... I don't know. Do you think the ice spirit killed the cat? It's I only one way to find out. We look for a pool of butter. <laughs> this is beyond just the, the cat now. Like if this, this shouldn't be here. This they've disturbed the the resting of these Noringard heroes. How dare you! We killed one cat already, and you're ready to throw away the life of another. How dare you! When did we follow a cat? You know I'm, what? Never mind. I'm going to throw in a vote for arrest. Just a quick, maybe back in the last room. Just because we're a, a couple of us are looking a little worse for wear. Okay. If everyone here is comfortable with that. Um. Ben looks reluctant, yeah. but, but uh, acquiesces when he sort of looks at his frostbitten fingers. His, his frost nipped, even because they're a little reddish, mm -hmm. and he, he nods and says, Feel. Then, how are you feeling? Old. But, like, are you okay? I, the hug really did get me back in it, he says, sort of struggling. Oh, I could give you another one. Mm. Would that help? Uh, let's wait. I don't want to get burn out on them. That's fair. They are, they are quite intense hugs. I've been told they're the best. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> so we uh, make so our way I... to the last room with the dead guy in it to take a rest. Yeah, let's I'll rest with the dead guy. So I think it'll be so cool. I poke his bones. No, 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 don't. Cool. Okay. Okay. So you return to the, uh, the resting place of this uh, fallen field maiden and. It's currently not lit, dark here, except for the torch that you bring, if you so choose. And the, uh, the light of outside, you can see a little bit of the starlight through the entrance. That's about it. I think we would like to take a short rest. Okay. Need you all to make uh, perception checks. Okay. That is a natural 27. Nice. <laughs> nice. Five. I got 18. I rolled more than a six. 17. Five as well. Thir okay. A five. All right. Toki, as you're sitting there and you're just listening to the sounds of the tunnels deeper within, 
You can hear some whispering in your ear. You're not quite sure what's being said. Mm. Do you hear that? Toki says, and as he's leaning against the wall, uh, sitting on the floor, he, he looks around. Who's whispering to me? With my 18, do I hear that? No. Okay. Wait, is just playing with her hair? <laughs> uh, no, Toki. Nobody's whispering. No. Somebody's whispering. Mm -hmm. All in your head, old man. No. But I'm sorry, what? Politely, Tulani. Politely. You're the Nobody's old man. Whispering. Uh, I don't I think that's whisper. true. Uh, Tulami's very young. The opposite of old, actually, in case you did not know. What do you know about being old? Absolutely young. nothing. That's young. a good point. I don't know anything. You young <laughs> kids, you don't know anything. You don't know nothing about being old. That's and I true. hear voices. I'm telling you, there's voices in this, in here, somewhere. He looks okay. around. Okay. Okay. Well, then, uh, where do you think they're coming from? Uh, would Toki have an idea of maybe where they're coming from, or would it just be more around him, so to speak? They're deeper into the tunnel. You feel that the voices are trying to talk to you and have sort of a beckoning tone. Toki will uh, kind of scruffle up just that. Uh, he will uh, struggle to get to his feet, and he will lean on his staff and look down the uh, the hallway, or the tunnel, rather. They're that way, I think. Zeke so hops to her feet and just kind of steps in front of him like, no, no, don't don't go alone. We're sitting well, here. We're resting. I, I think I I think we should talk to them. I, I They're telling me I need to go. We can talk to them? after we've sat down and licked our wounds for a little bit. That sounds gross. <laughs> yeah, so do we, disgusting. Do we have just, to lick them? Just a figure of speech. Spit on them, maybe? I've never tried that before. Maybe we could try it more often. Okay. He sighs and uh, reluctantly yield to seek yield, and he falls back down on the floor and leans against the wall and tries to... Uh, listen clo more closely to the to the voices while he's resting okay. all of you can hit your short rest buttons uh the voices seem to fade after your conversation toki so my hit die uh, make sure and uh update how much hp you got and all that What are you all doing after the short rest? We stand up and I stretch. Oh, that felt nice. It was good. Oh, didn't know how much I could use a break. So those voices, you said they were coming from farther in? Toki uh, gets back up and he's holding his back. He's like, ow! Oh. Here, let, let, uh, me, let me just... Oh. Oh. Ah. She's a doctor. Oh. Uh, the, I don't know. They're, I don't hear them anymore. But I think they were going that way. And he points down the hallway. Well, all right. It well. That's in... where we're heading, some... anyways. Yeah. Okay. Let's get moving then. Yeah. Then we'll take the lead again with the, the torch. He looks a lot better now. He's uh, fully sort of recovered. Okay. And as you all proceed down the shortened tunnel, you make your way through and you see the area where the ceiling has collapsed and the snowfall in that small cavity. And as you proceed further in, I need all of you to make perception checks. We very briskly walk past the snowy area. That's a three. 
Twenty-one. Eleven. Fifteen. Ten. Ten's ten? Sten's ten. Okay. Ten from Sten. The ten that Sten rolled. Yeah. The roll from Sten, which was ten. All right. So as you approach this 30 by 30 foot chamber up ahead, you notice about three inches off the ground, there's a tripwire. You stop just shy of it. Halt! And Nobody move. Right. Nobody move. Oh. Stay where you are. Uh, I point out the tripwire to, to everybody who's noticed it, obviously. Who hasn't noticed it, even. Oh. Oh. Good eye there. Slaps him on the back. Staggers forward into the tripwire. Oh, no, I'm not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, as you look at the tripwire, uh, go ahead and make an investigation check, Thurston. You're doing great. Uh, I wouldn't help. I rolled a one. Oh, okay. Great. Um, so, as you're looking at it, you're just like, hmm, that's weird. I don't know what that's connected to. That slap from Seiko did a little bit too much to your, just rattled your head a little bit. Toki uh, points his staff at the um, at the tripwire and he begins to move it like this, and he closes his eyes, and uh, nothing happens. But he thinks he's casting magic. <laughs> what what you what's he doing? what you doing there? I'm making Just let it him go do away. his work. It's very important magic. Go. I'm making it go away. You do that. Okay. I believe in you. He opens his eyes. And, and looks at the trip bar to see if it's gone. It's still there. It was worth a try. Wrong. Says, Let, I can't figure out what this is attached to. Sten says, sort of examine it. Let's just step over it and be careful. Um, how many are there? Looks it's like just the one. the one. Is is the ceiling still small or has it opened up a little? It's like the the, so, the ceiling in the new chamber is about 15 feet high. Yeah. Okay. And looking further in, you can see a few stone slabs over little mounts. And there's uh, stone work here uh, with some engraving on it. And there's an in an additional tunnel at the far end of the western side of the chamber and the southern end. Are you all stepping in, or what are you doing? Yeah, yeah we can... I'm gonna step over the tripwire. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna point out the the fact that the slabs are absent. He says, "Keep your eyes out." It's like either this has been looted, or those bones are moving on their own. Yeah. So as you step, as you step further into the chamber um you see a sudden movement between the slabs drawing your attention Stan. and there's a pale hand with a dark sleeve that suddenly flops out onto the floor and you see the hand twitching and jerking i immediately cast sacred flame at the hand <laughs> i'm not wasting any time yep. these these are accursed to neth so <laughs> okay um, go ahead and shield immediately out. Roll, go ahead and roll damage. Go ahead and roll damage. I rolled three, sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you see the, the pale hand sort of light up with radiant energy and uh, burn, and then it stops moving. Toki had, uh, came into the, the chamber, saw the hand, and ducked behind uh, one of the ta the tablets on the floor, and uh, is now peeking around. Is it gone? Then's going to creep around the far side of the wall to try and see with his light, trying to get some shine, some light onto where the body would be. Okay. So you can see the hand is poking out from underneath the stone slab. And the rest of the presumed body is beneath the stone slab. Sigild has her sword and shield out and has her sword pointed at the hand. And she just goes, and stay down. Well, 
All right, well, do we want to just kind of push it under and push the stone slab back over and be on our way? I don't, I don't think we should go near it. Yeah, I don't know That's if we should fair. open it. It seems like a bad idea. That's more really taking bad. a closing it fully. Because <clears throat> the hand's like sticking out of a gap <laughs> from the stone slab, right? Yes. I'm just worried that uh, it might get back up again. But if the slab's there, it might not be able to push through. Take your cut off that arm. What? If if it's not attacking us, if it's just resting. Don't disturb the dead if they're not risen. I'm if going to go back. help Bjorn. He, I don't want to stand in the back by myself. I am scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we take a look around and see if we can find any little cat prints or bits of fur? All right. That is such a good idea. Every now and then I have them. And as the party, as the party decides to be productive with their time, you hear a lot of uh, squeaking <laughs> as you see some furry little critters start to scrabble out from beneath the stone slab. And you see a couple dozen rats pour out. And I need everybody to roll initiative. Question. Is it coming out of the same one that the hand was poking out of? Yes. Is the hand still there? The hand's there, it's just cooked. Okay. Neat. Uh, let me know when you're Toasty. ready. Out of 20. Nine, baby. Going to kill so many rats. Yeah, just give me a moment. seven. Okay. Ignore these. I didn't start the encounter. Okay, Ectolina, what'd you get? 20. Twenty. Okay, and then uh, Tulami. Ten. Ian. Ten. Seven. Seven. Okay, Toki. Eighteen. Eighteen. And Seagull. See. I already forgot. Hold on. Nine. Okay. And did I miss anybody? Bjorn. Ten. Ten. Yeah. All right. Ectolina, you see as a giant dog-sized rat, which is scrabbled out from beneath the stone slab, scooting it a little bit, uh, perches up on the stone slab before it leaps out at you, attempting to bite you. How at you? With a 15 to hit? That hits. Okay. So you see the rat uh, as it uh, latches onto your arm and bites down. <laughs> oh, I lost that D4. For uh, five piercing damage, and I need you to make a con save. Okay. 18. Okay, you make it. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, yeah, so you feel uh, just a bit of nastiness, and you immediately feel like this is going to get infected as that rat bites you. Oof. And after a moment, it drops off your arm, no longer latched onto you, and it's your currently your turn. Ectolina, what would you like to do? I am going to take my rapier and stab him in the face. On guard. Okay. Dumb rat. Yeah. Roll the hit. Eight. Okay. I clank on the rocks on the floor right in front of him. <laughs> okay. Would you like to do anything else? Uh, yes. Going to take the rapier and in a happy sing songy voice, I'm going to say, Bjorn, if you don't get these rats, I will get you and cast Bardic Inspiration on him. Okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, Toki, currently your turn. What are you doing? Toki is going to... Uh, he had been maneuvering around the room, and he hears uh, the squealing from Ectolina that he's becoming familiar with, and he turns around and sees <laughs> all these rats, and uh, he's just... It's, oh! 
Gross. And he's going to have to shield out, and he's going to run over. And uh, as he's raising his staff in the air, it'll transform again as he casts your Lele. He's going to whack on the uh, big swarm of rats. Okay. One roll to hit. Uh, natural 20. Ooh. Hey, yo. Is nine damage total. And that okay. That's the crit damage. Okay, and Shlela makes your damage magical, correct? Yes. Okay. So, uh, you are swinging at the swarm of rats, right? Yes. Okay. All right, so you walk over and you just start to just punt rats with your staff and they they start to fly around and some of them are hitting the barrel wall and just immediately having their backs broken. Die, die, die. Okay, would you like to do anything else? Uh, that's it. Okay. And all right. So now that you have captured the attention of the rats as it sees its comrades falling, to your onslaught, it's going to turn its attention onto you, Okay. and attempt to crawl up your staff and leap at your face. They are so gross. For so an 18 to hit? Uh, yes. For... Five piercing damage as several of the rats le leap onto you and start to bite you in several places. Toki tries his best to shield his face, but his fingers are bitten, his face is bitten, his neck, uh, every portion of his skin that's, uh, you know, not covered to the elements is being ripped at as he uh, stumbles backwards and screams. Is uh, Toki down? Uh, no, not yet, but he's pretty close. 3 HP. All right. Yorn, currently your turn. What are you doing? Yorn's going to rush to uh, Toki's aid and take a big meaty meaty swing at the swarm of rats. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, how does Bardic Inspiration works? I can choose to roll after I roll my initial roll, right? Mm-hmm. So let's see what I got. Well, I won't need it. I rolled a 25. Okay. Yeah, that oh, definitely hits. God. And roll damage. Uh, 10 slashing damage. Oh, okay. Meaty so, slash. All right. And you end up uh, killing a few more rats, five to be precise, as you uh, start carving them up. And they're, you can see their numbers dwindling. And they're about a third of what they once were. Would you like to do anything else? Nope. That's all I got. All right, Tulami. Pretty good. Tulami, nice. your turn. What are you doing? I'm going to move up and here I'm trying to position. Yeah. Okay. And move up. One, two. And um, take my to my two daggers. I'm uh use sneak attack on them. Am I able to do that because of the? Mm. I'm going to say no because so, it's a swarm. Oh, uh, okay. So I'll just use my two handed, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so the first one is <laughs> nine. Okay, you uh, narrowly miss any of the rats that you start swinging with as you uh, step on a rock and your footing slides a little. Twenty-two. Okay, that definitely hits. You start connecting with the rats. What's uh, what's the damage? The damage is twelve. Wait, they added the sneak attack, so um, six. Okay. All right, you kill three more rats as you head over and attempt to uh, pacify this onslaught. Eagled. You have a swarm of rats that everyone seems to be focusing on, and then a giant rat attacking Ectolino. What are you doing? Uh, she's going to glance between the swarm of rats and the big rat, and then she's going to step forward and attack the big rat. Okay. Um, 
And during this next round, she is not going to forget her reaction of protection. Like she did last time. But don't worry about it. Go and swing to hit. Uh, 17 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Yay. Uh, One-handed 11 slashing damage. Kill rat, kill rat, kill rat. Describe how you kill that giant rat. <laughs> uh, I think literally just bring the sword down in one slice, probably just not completely bisected, but probably just like the front half, just kind of carve a good chunk off of it. All right, and it uh, stops moving in short order. Would you like to do anything else? You okay? Take that, you ugly little rat. I'll take that I as a yes. I told you. You're going to get caught. That's her turn. Okay. Stan, your turn. What are you doing? Okay, Stan can hear Toki's like, cries of pain. He can see the blood flecking from all the bites and the rat's yeah. like, being literally flung from him. So he's going to... Uh, Tighten his grip on his uh, torch and cast resistance on himself. And then he's going to draw his shield and then start to move to Toki. And he's going to use his combat maneuver, allows him to swap places with somebody and add his superiority dice as AC to himself for a turn. Yeah. Cool. So I'll swap places with Toki. And then I roll a d6 because my dice is a d6. Yep. And my AC is increased to 23. And that's my turn. He sort of he moves in, he grabs Toki by the by the shoulders, flings him back over himself, and then strides in with his shield up, trying to knock away the the rats to keep him off. All right, Ectolina, currently your turn. What are you doing? Well, fresh off this this kill, even though it wasn't mine, we're gonna ignore that. Um, she's going to reach down, grab flute, and play very very low note, lots of reverb, and cast Song of Pain on giant swarm of rats. Okay. That's a ooh. That's a ten. Uh, ten hits. Ooh. Five psychic. Ooh. Okay. Just whoa. Okay. I need you to describe uh, as five rats are killed by your song. All right, as she blows into her flute, a couple seconds of a super low note goes by, and then the rat's ears start to bleed because their tiny brains exploded inside of their tiny skulls. <laughs> you don't see it's like five rats just chop. Um, there's only a couple of rats left. Uh, Toki, what are you doing? Uh, as Stan had uh, kind of grabbed him and tossed him back, all the rats had fallen off, he kind of stumbled to the ground um, so he's going to push himself back up and he's going to uh, brush off the dust quickly and he's going to run back over with his shillelagh okay. and try and smash the remaining rats yeah go ahead uh, 16 yep that hits uh, for 6 damage right by you smash the remainder of the rats uh, Toki Old fueled man. by uh, all man. the bites Old and the man. blood he angrily just comes over and starts smashing rats as much as he can and stomping on them and even after they're all dead he keeps crushing their corpses underneath his feet and he's like, ah, 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 ah. I, I think they're they're done for he, he snaps his head to Bjorn and he's like ah! and he waves his, uh, his staff but he realizes that it's Bjorn and he doesn't hit him we've exited combat what are you all doing that was very feral, old man, but that was something else. I liked that. That was cool. Uh, uh. Lena, I, I never heard that uh, that sound come out of your, your uh, instrument before. That was uh, quite uh, haunting, I guess. That hurt even, my ears. I've been practicing. It's supposed to. Sorry. Oh, oh. oh okay. Sorry it, has a, it sounds so beautiful normally. Stop. Toki, uh, stop. feeling tired and and hurt, he's gonna crawl over to one of the stone slabs and just lay on top of it. Oh, Toki, I don't think you should lay on that. I just need a minute. I don't feel good. 
That's I, the I'm, rats came from underneath that, and that's also where the bodies are buried. I could play you a prettier song, and maybe you would feel better. Uh, he's, he kind of groans and he rolls away from them, and he shows his back as he crosses his arms. Uh, I will play a prettier bit. song. That's a good idea. She just plays like a tiny little like do 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 do. For seven points of healing as she casts healing words. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Uh, so as uh, as she casts that, um, he kind of is laying there and he's listening to the music and he just begins to kind of tap his foot against the stone and he's like, mm, "I like that song." Fine. And he pushes himself up off the uh, the stone and he gathers his things and he stumbles back over to the rest <laughs> of the group. If you're tired, I could give you a piggyback ride. Yeah, I remember when we were in the woods and you piggyback ride me to Bance. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, you, you want you want to come here. You'll hit his head <laughs> on the ceiling. Be careful. <laughs> That's a good idea. I didn't even hand. think about that. Toki waves his hand dismissively. Not maybe later when we go back home. All right, all right. Are there any signs of uh, small cats that live here, other than the fact that there are rats everywhere and the cat hasn't killed them, like a like a silly cat? Uh, yes. Let's let's check. Roll investigation at advantage. Fifteen. So you don't find uh, any evidence of cats. However, you do find, uh, as you're kind of peeking around, you look underneath the, the stone slab where the corpse was. And you find some uh, interesting stuff in there if you choose to reach down and grab it. I do. All right. So you turn up a satchel, which has two daggers. And then a couple of vials and a journal. Ectolina, are you defiling a grave? That's it's really not a defiling. Idea. I am looking for a cat and I found this book instead. So you're grave robbing? I am not. That's, that's not what wrong. this that's, is. That's clearly not a cat, though. So you don't need to touch it. I already touched it. We're way past that now. Doesn't that look like a grave okay. He doesn't need any of that. And, uh, um, can I read it? Can What's you... in the journal? Okay. As you open up the journal, you can see that it is, it was, it did belong to someone named Seldil. And to Lamy, you immediately recognize that as one of the members of the Underhand team who had thrown you off the waterfall. And its contents are mostly about the patrol routes of the Bensa city guard. The team itself was sent there to spy on the city, and they were interested in the Jarl's sword. Um, I know we joke around a lot, like quite a bit, but this is not very good. Um, if they're taking notice of guard routes, that means they're going to be looking for times when guards aren't there, and they're going to do something bad. Toki points an accusing finger at Tulami. I knew you were a spy! No. no. Oh yeah, because that makes sense, because I just happened to find my own shit in a grave. Yeah, Sorry. because... My, own, my, tr my trash. Yes, because, thank you for um... being mindful of your language, little one. Thank I'm you. sorry. <laughs> You said so, shit. I'm just, I'm a little flustered because everybody seems to think that this is my fault, even though I happen to walk in at the same time with all of you, and I'm 14. We do this not think. Grave. No, no. Oh, no, we no. Do no, not no. think it was you. It's just the old man. I think it was him. Toki struggles to come up with a reason why it would be Tulami, but he it seems confident that Tulami is a spy. But... I'm going to go over and scratch the old man's head like this, so it feels nice, and he calms down. Yeah. Stop it! He wiggles his, his hand and smacks her hand away. No, you'll he, like it. You'll like it. He runs away from her. 
Oh, I'm sorry. You can move your fingers in that rat's nest. Speaking of which, and then Sten will move over and realign the uh, the slab on top of the uh, the sarcophagus after That's putting the hand, popping the hand back inside. He re returns it into place. Okay. Tulami also, there are some notes in the journal about capturing and punishing the defector. And you all find, uh, let's say, Seagilt, you notice a great axe that has been uh, left beside one of the stone slabs and a pouch of coins. He's going to leave them. She's respectful. I'm not sure if this is a grave, but I mean, there is a dead person. That does not mean it's for them and their, um, their stuff. I'm no uh, alchemical scientist, but I do think that when there are dead people and they're surrounded by coins and their belongings, that that usually means it's a grave. Can I tell who the dead person is? Or is it too decomposed? You can see remnants of the similar skin tone to yourself, and you can see some of the Svaltafar uh, armor. It, Sorry. It was a an underhand agent. Yes. The the real question is what's what's this fella doing out here, and. Spencer Barrow mines. More importantly, who buried him? That's true. He didn't crawl up in here himself, did he? Tulami? Yeah. You have you ever known a Svartofar agent that used a big evil cat as a spy? They left me out of that case. <laughs> I don't <laughs> good point. That's good. Okay. I would be really upset if I found out and they didn't have me though. Like You're right, that is super cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would feel upset too if I got left out of that. I'm sorry. I will not leave you I'm out. I'm dealing with a lot right now. Talami, describe what was in the journal, because I imagine it's not written in a language that's commonly known. So Oh, well, did I read it? I didn't know if I was reading it or if So it's written in um the same language. However, uh, the parts that are uh, the journal itself is written in a code that is recognized by Tulami. Um, a secret I, code. So it looks, it looks like that it's, they're keeping track of the gods and the, what was it? Uh, there's, they're spying. And they want the Yaw sword? The Yarl sword? Would, is that important? Is that... I... Oh, yeah. Yeah. What Bjorn said. Yeah. I mean, it's the Yarl sword, so it's got to be important, right? I don't I don't know why, but, I mean, if the Yarl holds it, it's pretty important, I'd assume. It's Probably symbolic still. of something. Yeah, yeah. Would I happen to know why it's important? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Well, there's some noises in this cave here that I don't um, really appreciate. <laughs> um, I so there's a whirlpool nearby. The uh, yeah, water elemental swarms into the room. <laughs> um, so is it a named sword. Mm. It is a named sword. Yes, it's every like... jarl has a sword, and you would know that. Uh, typically, jarls have a sword that has been especially crafted and or uh, blessed by um one of their uh i'm drawing a blank here uh ba -bum -bum. voter voter Vader. the wise person who uh tends to them and generally to become a yarl you have to be uh sort of a storied person and that's why the sword is important normally it's like part of the lore with a Jarl gaining enough popularity to become a Jarl. 
Seeing how we'll relay that information. <laughs> so that's why okay. it's important. And we probably shouldn't let them get it. They're usually, no. uh, I, I believe, named swords are uh, magic. Do you do you think we should leave and, and, and notify the Arl's guards immediately? I, I think we're already here. We should investigate a little more. And then we should go let them know. Maybe All we right. should see if the other stones are hiding anything important. Uh, I don't know. Hold on to that journal. I don't feel too good about digging through the barrow mounds. Well, if there's a dead elf underneath that one, what's underneath the other two? Uh, rats and some undead thing. I don't think we should. I, I think we do should we, leave the do others. Do we really have to do this? I, I I, don't think I feel comfortable personally going that close to where I came from. Um, I, I would prefer not to go searching for more dead elves. Bugs. Yeah, if we don't have to. I thought we were looking for a butter cat. <laughs> this is, I that's killed so a butter worse. cat. You did the, the other, the other murderer. cats. The, the, the murder cat. I like to think of it as a butter cat because that makes it less scary. The Jarl could take care of himself. The people in Venice who are being predated on by whatever this cat is can't take care of themselves. We should press on to try and locate it or at least secure something to protect people who actually need it. I mean, de Devil's Advocate, they should not get the sword. That That would be very bad. That sounds like the Yaw's problem. Toki intently looks at Sten and nods his head. That's why you're the druid. You know things. I I suppose Sten does have a point. I mean, these people are dying. And they don't really have much in the way of protection. Agreed. So we look for the cat. And if we still have time... Then we go and let them know. Agreed. All right, which way? Oh, I'm not good with decisions like that. Uh, All right, let's go right. Okay. I follow. Reading on with the torch again. Okay, roll a d4. Tell me if it's odd or even. Oh, boy. It is odd. Okay. One might say. One might say. Okay, One so might say. Uh, you all proceed uh, to the south, and you can see that the tunnel has some collapsed earth where it used to be a standard uh, built sort of with stone all along either side of the tunnel leading deeper in. And the stone slab has been shoved uh, aside to allow that opening and the passage through. And just as you bend down, as the ceiling comes down to about where it was uh, previously in the tunnel, about five feet tall, you see Who's up front? Then. Me. Then? Okay. So you right behind him. Okay. I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Hey. Okay. I am always next to Bjorn. For no particular reason. I got a 12. Okay. So you see a little glint of something up ahead, and you just raise your shield in time, and you hear a thunk as a crossbow bolt. That's it, and that's where we're going to pause for today. <laughs>